I could recall sleeping on the ground with the clothes thrown down, old clothes that nobody wore anymore. My mother put that on the ground, make a mattress out of that, and we slept on the ground. I could recall that as well. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to move away, and that was similar to what other children who lived in McKnight at that time were experiencing, mm -hmm. and had to sleep. And then we moved up from sleeping on lodgings, as we called it, to coconut fiber, where fiber was shredded from the coconut and put into um, a cloth kind of a container and spread out like a mattress on the floor. Eventually, you, up, you upgrade to a bed. We got beds after that, where we started out on the floor. Mm -hmm. So from the floor to freedom of him, what's the story? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Well, it didn't happen so fast, right? Um, in all, I have eight children. Well, there's a recent one, so maybe he's nine. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I, nine. I had, I had wait, a, wait, 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 wait. Well, from since I got um, a light went off in my mind about Africa and how we had been brutally brought here by force into as slaves and so on and what we have done since then to free up our minds from as Bob said the mental slavery it, it, it struck a chord in me a chord of of unity of oneness of strength we see where violence is erupting in your um community mm -hmm. your home community where you say you would grow up um what's your thoughts on that well, first off, I would like to extend condolences to all the people over these many years who have lost children due to violence and crime, especially gun violence. And my thoughts on that is that we need to put on the gun. Make your brain your gun. Think positively. Big up your family. Help each other as, as, as a people. Because using the gun and the violence ain't getting us nowhere. Yeah. Without going into the social <laughs> dimension. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, we have to go into it. We have to get into it. Uh, yeah, so so much baby mother have? Well, you know, a few. Mm. Yeah, you know. But five? A little over eight? five. No, I don't have eight. A little, maybe about seven. Jesus. No, yeah. man. Yeah, man. Uh, uh. Like, literally? Yeah, but. So, how you, know, you, you, you end up with so much? So, so, so. Life. Life. So, so you're in a relationship now? Um, I wouldn't say I'm in a ladies, relationship. The ladies I'm in more in a relationship with my children them and so on. Don't think no, I'm not asking about your children them. Oh. I'm asking about female to man. Yeah. A relationship. Are you in a relationship? That's well, what I'm asking. A relationship with different females to have children. For, is a relationship in a car you got to provide for your children? No, I'm not talking about that. You talk about sexual, a talk about sexual relationship or I girlfriend. I can't discuss that on, on the ear. That is my personal business. <laughs> 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 so, like, you have multiple, man. No, no, I, I don't want you to jump to any conclusions because of that. No, but if you're not, be straightforward. Me, I'm going to jump to conclusions. How many, how, you, have, you have more than one girlfriend? I have one. You have one? Yeah. You don't have no side chick? No. Just one? Just Are one. Are you faithful to her? Right. You sure? Yes, I am. Okay, so you say. So no, but, but then you, you the same question to you. Do you have a girlfriend? Can oh, well, the, the, the ladies in here say there's some carpet cleaning in it. I tolerate men. We live in a risky world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the Perspectives podcast is brought to you by True Vibes Island Prints. For the best quality t-shirts and prints, True Vibes is your only choice. The Perspectives Podcast is also brought to you by J Ink Tattoo. For clean tattoos like these, book your appointments today. Welcome back or welcome to Perspectives Media. This is another edition of The Active. Yes, this is an active. Even though we're indoors, we're still on the outside. You know what I mean? We're here in Freedom Studios. Well, Freedom FM. Some would say the biggest radio station in St. Kitts Nevis. And we're here with the Freedom Boss. You know what I mean? We're here to have a conversation. You know what I mean? Have a few topics we want to talk about. But to begin with, introduce yourself to the Perspectives family. My name is Clement Juni Lybird. Born in McKnight, St. Kitts. Educated at the Bastia Boys School. The high school, the Bastia High School. 
I went to overseas at one point and did um, some degrees in Jamaica, uh, in Canada and the US, bachelor's and master's degrees. Uh, I came back and um, worked at ZIZ for a while and then finally opened up my own station here at Freedom FM, 106.5 World Class Radio at its very best. Um, it has been a pleasure working with the folks who work here, my colleagues and the employees. We have a good relationship, we are family, and I won't trade it for the world. They mean everything to me. Um, this has been an outstanding journey. We had some trials and tribulations when we first started in getting the station open, but we persevered and uh, we stuck to our guts. We stuck to what we wanted to do, and in the end, we have been together now for 13 years come August 30th, 2023. Right, so I feel like you give a big overview on Freedom FM. So let's go back to the beginning now. Mm -hmm. Juni Library, who are you? Like, what was, what was your childhood like growing up? Well, I grew up in McKnight, born in McKnight, in the ghetto, mm. and um, raised in Dorset, Market Street area. I can recall growing up that we lived in an alley with a drain running down the center of the alley. And um, we had, we kept goats uh, in order to sell milk to make a living. That's how hard it was at that time. Um, but it was also giving me energy and giving me perspective to come out of that situation and do better than what my father and my mother had done. Mm -hmm. It's always the aim for your mother and father to push you beyond where they reach. Mm -hmm. And I got that push from my mother and father and family and, and friends and neighbors were all um, persevering to make sure that the children in the ghetto came out of the ghetto into better situations. Um, so I could recall that we moved from McKnight to Dorset mm -hmm. and we took, put our truck, we put our house on a truck mm -hmm. and moved it physically. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we moved the truck. Wow. We moved that wow. house. We put the house on the back of a truck mm -hmm. and moved it to Dorset. That is how things were back so in what, those days. So what was the difference between McKnight and, and Dorset? At well, the time? same. It was the same. It was just um, that we had, well, we had moved from out of the alley into an area that was plain, like facing the street. It wasn't in an alleyway. So that okay, was an okay. improvement. Uh, 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 so it was a it was an upgrade to live in condition. It was an upgrade. Right, yeah. right. So in growing up in Dorset and McKnight, you always had aspirations to be on radio or is it that you wanted to become like a, you wanted to do a traditional nine to five ultimately well to be honest uh, i started out writing poetry mm -hmm. i used to write a lot of poetry back then um growing up because i love the spoken word mm -hmm. remember that we didn't have television and internet and social media in those days so the spoken word was from what you wrote as a matter of fact, I gravitated to a cultural group named Okolo mm -hmm. um, back in the day to read my poetry and drum and speak about Africa and revolution and changing up the status quo and making it better for people to live. So what was the status quo back then, at that, at that point in time? Well, the status quo was like people were living in poverty. Um, I could recall sleeping on the ground with the clothes thrown down, old clothes that nobody wore anymore. My mother put that on the ground, make a mattress out of that, and we slept on the ground. I could recall that as well. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to move away, and that was similar to what other children who lived in McKnight at that time were experiencing, mm -hmm. and had to sleep. And then we moved up from sleeping on lodgings, as we called it, to coconut fiber, where fiber was shredded from the coconut and put into um, a cloth kind of a container and spread out like a mattress on the floor. Eventually, you, up, you upgrade to a bed. We got beds after that, where we started out on the floor. Mm. So from the floor to Freedom FM, what's the story? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Well, it didn't happen so fast, right? Mm -hmm. But um, we went through growing up, um, the experience that we had 
in the ghetto and so on. Then we went to um, boys' school, which was the primary school back then. And you, you, were, you, you was excelling academically? I want to think that I, I was good in reading subjects like history and um, English and so I Think, wasn't good things at that would Okay, so things that would relate to poetry, speaking. Right, exactly. Yeah, the, exactly. That, that was always your passion, like you always had it to speak. To speak, yeah. yeah. And it's funny how I got into radio because um, after going to high school and so on, when I came out of high school, by that time I had developed a keen interest for broadcasting. I used to listen to a radio station, well, apart from the local radio station here, which the, the kind of music it used to play was very classical. Mm -hmm. And now and again, some pop and thing from Britain and the US and so. The white groups and thing, you know, those were the ones that got the most exposure on the radio. Yeah, because back then, I would, I would like to imagine back then, when you talk about white, mm -hmm. it, it, it relates to the stories like of Bob Marley. Yeah. Like exactly. them time, the Bob Marley literally had to fight to get his music on radio. Exactly. Like physically fight. Exactly. Beat up radio man for play him song. Yeah, so. Exactly because people yeah. sound some North America were uh, the, the main thing on the playlist, mm -hmm. and so radio stations used to play those. But I could recall listening to a DJ growing up from St. Lucia, Willie James. He had a show name. I don't even remember the name of the show, but he had a show, a radio show, and I used to listen to it and say, I could do that. I want to be like that guy. He first got me interested in broadcasting, just listening to him. And that, that was, a, that was you, you knew the face behind... No, I didn't know the face the, behind Oh, just the, the voice. Just the voice that yeah, I know. Yeah, There was yeah. no face. Right. And there was no yeah. social media to say, well, here's a clip. Mm -hmm. And he was in St. Lucia. He so, was in St. Lucia. Yeah, so you wouldn't have known who he was, but you were in, he was inspired by that. Right. Yeah, hearing right. that voice over the radio. Right. So, in, in school, from school days, you know, traditionally, Mommy would have say, become a lawyer, a doctor, a police, you know, a fireman, some, right. something like that. Mm -hmm. But what, what kind of reception did you get from your parents when they told you, like, when you told well, them that you want to be... A radio announcer. They say I could be anything I wanted to be. My mother, in particular, was a driving force in my life. She um, she made sure that um, we had clothes on our our back, shoes on our feet. Even if it was one pair of shoes, we went to church and school. Mm. And um, if rain was coming, you took it off and push it in a bag so they don't get wet, wet. and broken up and so the leather, you know. Um, but she was an inspiration. And she always encouraged me to um, go on and pursue my dreams. You know, you can do this. You have the ability and the skill. Never mind where you come from. That doesn't matter. It's what you have up here that counts. The mindset. And giving me that kind of perspective and balance, it brought about change in what I used to think. Because sometimes when you do something and you don't get you, you tend to feel like you're defeated. Right. And you can't accomplish that. Right. But she broke the shackles and said, no, 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 don't, don't think that way. Break the shackles right away and think that you can do this and you'll be able to do it. But you see, that's a key thing in any, in any story, you know, because mm -hmm. it starts, everything starts at home. Right. So if your parents give you that confidence to be something good, I think you'll ultimately you'll be something good. Exactly. And if your parents encourage um, bad behavior, then you'll strive in bad behavior. You know what I mean? So, um, how did you get your start in radio? Very important question. I got my start when I left high school, graduated from Bastion High School, and I applied for a job at the local government radio station, ZIZ mm -hmm. Radio, because it was operating on the AM only at that time. And um, I applied, and I was successful. And so when I left high school, I went straight into radio. Mm -hmm. And I had a shift on the radio, and I used to do some news as well because the uh, manager said that he recognized that I had skills, broadcasting skills. What, what, what year was that? This was like 1968, 69, wow. somewhere around there. You're a big man, <laughs> like you're a real big man. You know, isn't yes, man. You, really look, you, don't look, you don't look like you're that age, man. Right, right. But you... you, you I've been there. I come in here. You, you, you've been there, man, 1960s. So what was radio like back then? Radio back then was like you had, each island had a radio station, it would seem. Only and one? You could, 
one. Yeah. And we used to hear like ABS in Antigua, ZDK in Antigua, and so on. And um, some other stations in the Virgin Islands. We used to pick up stations in the Virgin Islands, in St. Croix, mm -hmm. St. Thomas, uh, Tartola, and so on. They had radio stations. I think AM band, you could pick up more powerful than an FM band, FM frequency. And so we used to pick up radio stations overseas. The more power they had, the better you heard them. If they were right, stations, right. they would drift in and out. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't hear them too good. Mm -hmm. But that is the start that I got. I left high school and went to work at ZIZ and worked there for a while. I had a show called um, Soul Serenade. Mm, and what was Soul Serenade about? Because I would like to imagine radio was more about broadcasting what's happening versus entertainment. Correct. Yeah, so very, what very informative information and education we used to play a lot of bbc uh, stories turn stories, the mic to you more. things that happened in um in england and so became but you know we were a colony at that time right and so we would bring what the metropolis produced and put that out there as information and uh, the bbc was featured regularly on the radio station the british broadcasting corporation so mm. we carried the, that as news and we had our own local news as well mm. but i did my shifts and for a number of years and then i left i i i, felt I, I got tired of doing what i was doing mm -hmm. I, I wasn't seeing the income for the hours i was putting in i wasn't seeing a return in the income mm -hmm. you know and so i decided it's time for me to move on i'd done what i had to do right and what what did you move on to at that time i went to college you went to college. That was the next step. And, and what did you study in college? Well, I went to the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus in Jamaica, spent three years there, mm -hmm. and I did a bachelor's in um, political science and English. Wow. So why political science and English? I was thinking about politics at the time mm -hmm. um, because I was getting caught up with um, the drama of politics. To me, the leadership was needed in the country. There were good leaders and there were bad leaders. And I felt that um, I wanted to get involved politically. Not to be, like, I didn't think about being a leader necessarily, but changing the status quo for people. Mm -hmm. Change, an agent of change. I saw myself as an agent of change, providing leadership to people um, and helping them in their situation to have a better life. Mm -hmm. That was my mission at that time. So I went to college, I spent the three years there, came back with a bachelor's degree and return to work in radio again <laughs> <laughs> so radio, I, so what's the sense of what so what's the sense in 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 going into politics then in, well, in going into to, to going to study then well the sense in doing that was that it improved your income oh Once okay you okay had okay, a okay. Degree, yeah you were paid higher than somebody who had all levels are uh, you know high school levels right right I, after i left Mona and came back here in 1973-74. I uh, spent some time here and then I went to the US to further my studies and to make a living because even with the graduate money that I was making, it still wasn't paying the bills. So <clears throat> I went to New York and worked there for a while and then enrolled in Long Island University and then Brooklyn College and did uh, two master's degrees. What? Yeah, I did a master's degree in broadcasting and one in education. At one point, I was fancying myself as a teacher. <laughs> so I said, let me do the two. And the thing is, the, the, the um, New York pay you according to your degrees. So the higher degree you have, the more money you make. Mm -hmm. So that was good. Mm -hmm. You know, at one point, I considered doing a PhD as well, but and by that time, I had made up my mind I wanted to come back home. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so why did you come back home? To, to, because he, I always wanted to live in St. Kitts. I mean, I had the opportunity to buy a house and property in Southern New York, but I didn't want to live up there, so I didn't want to put down a foundation, no mm -hmm. roots, so to speak. Even yeah. though I had children while I was living there. Yeah? Uh, yeah. How many children do you have in New York? Um, in all, I have eight children. Well, there's a recent one, so maybe he's nine. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I, nine, I, had, I had wait, 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 wait. So, nine children, Juni. Yeah, man. So, how much, much baby mother have? 
Let me see, man. That's a good question. I don't remember. I had, I had several baby mothers, you know what I mean? Yeah. What you, what you, you have children? I have one. Okay. But you need a bad boy, man. No, you're not a bad boy. Yeah, like, the time, yeah, yeah. the Bible said that these are blessings. Mm. You know, these are blessings. And so I provided for each and every one of them. Up to this day, I still look after my children from time to time. If they have needs that I feel I could help them with. Right. So, so moving back home now, what did you come back home to do? I wanted to set up myself in radio. Mm. I had a vision when I was living in New York that I'd come back home to live in St. Kitts and I was on the radio. At the time, I didn't think it was my radio station. I just had this desire to come back home because when I was in New York, I worked on radio as well part time. Mm. Apart from the teaching that I did. So, and you were a radio announcer? School, and huh? you, you were a radio announcer or what, what job did you do on radio in New I York? I worked a shift. Mm. A shift to play music and announce the same things like uh, what we do here in St. Kitts, but um, it was done up in New York at that time. I worked mm. at WLID and I had a station. I worked at a school in Bedford Stuyvesant, Bed Stuy, PS21, and there was some radio time allotted for the children to listen to radio, and children used to come and perform their poetry and sing songs. It was like, you know, doing a community kind of radio station, especially for the school population. And mm. I did that for a while. And then after I decided that it was time to come back home, I came home, I built a house in Boyd's, I moved in and settled down to do some things that I wanted to do for a very long time, which was getting back into radio. The part was, there were a lot of obstacles because um, people um, resisted me um, because my, I had family who were in politics. And if you're not towing the government line at the time, if you're in, in opposition, they're going to treat you with a certain scant respect. Mm. And so I got treated like that. And uh, I wasn't able to do much at the time. So my mother said, well, that's all, you know, you go college to do to come back here and do nothing. And so um, she encouraged me to open a store. I opened a store in what last kind year, of store? selling clothes, mm -hmm. selling raster items, hey. t-shirts, jeans, raster beads and all kinds of things, anything to do with raster, pictures and so on that I brought back posters for people to put in their homes and things. I did mm -hmm. all of that. Right. So, so. How did you get back into radio? Okay, so that took some while. I, I, looked for, I applied for a job here at the local radio station, but was not successful. Mm -hmm. Even though I'd worked there before. And um, a radio station in Nevis, Voice of Nevis, Van Radio, um, who's owned by um, Weber Herbert, he called me one day and said, man, come Nevis, come work. Come Nevis, we'll get a job up here. So I went to Nevis. I yeah. worked at Van Radio for a while. And then when the government changed, I came back down and got a job at the local radio station as general manager. Yeah, so was that a, 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 a level and was there a level of nepotism that got you that job? No. Okay, it's a government no. change. Yeah, the government changed and um, they recognized talent. I no, but why, that why, I have skills why, and abilities. But that why were you not recognized before? Well, the government at the time was not seen eye to eye with members of my family. My family were in politics. Remember, I had a brother who was a minister of education. Oh, and okay, so okay. they were kind of shunting me to the side. They were promising me this and promising that. But when I left some of them interviews that I did, I could hear them snickering. Mm -hmm. As I walked down the, the, you know, the corridor, I could see that they weren't interested in giving me any work. So I put them aside and went Nevis to work. And that mm -hmm. is when the Lord showed me. I worked at Van Radio. I came back down to sink it's work at private radio station sugar city and then got a job with government in Wait, government sugar city. information sugar city yeah sugar city rock we got to spend a little time on sugar city rock what mm. was your experience at sugar city rock because me here me here ek talk about the yeah. horror, the horror story there like, yeah well for the most part i did news mm. i read news and i had a saturday morning shift i got paid Oh, you got paid. I made sure that I got paid. Mm. He used to tell me his stories. Thirty dollars a, a week. Yeah, well, uh, it, that that was the manager. And he, you know, that was his response, the management at that time. But I told the guy, look, let people. Let's say my check was five hundred dollars. Let's say, mm -hmm. I said, make sure if you can't pay me, make sure that the people who do business with you make out the check to me. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I had children and I had to rent to pay, not rent, but mortgage. And so I couldn't afford to be paid $30. Mm-hmm. So from Sugar City so, Rock, what, what was your next stop? My next stop after that was freedom. Mm-hmm. So, I, so speak to me about that freedom experience now. Well, I decided, my mother told me, look, you work with Rebo, you work at ZIZ, you work with Sugar City. When are you going to start working for you? That mm-hmm. hit me like a ton of bricks. Mm-hmm. She said, you'll be making money for people. Because when I did marketing for Sugar City, I did marketing for uh, Van Radio and Nevis. She said, you're making money for these people. Why don't you try and make money for yourself? Mm-hmm. You have this skill, you have the ability, you can do it. So move out of that now and, and try and see what you could do. So I applied, put in some applications to open a radio station. I found it, um, that area I got here that they would rent it to me at a particular price. And then I started to get an engineer from Montserrat interested. I know he's a big radio man, I met him, and he knew exactly what to order. And so he ordered the equipment and we set up and then we opened, we went on the air. Mm-hmm. On and the what 30th of, um, of, of um, July, August, August, 30th August, of August, 30th 2010. Of August. Wow. And what was the beginning stages like for freedom? It was hard, but it, 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 we knew what we, we had a plan. We had a game plan mm-hmm. and we put the game plan. We operationalized the game plan. We put it into work. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some DJs like, for instance, Sugar Bowl. And I'd work with Sugar Bowl at ZIZ. I work with Eke and Sister Sensei at um, Sugar, Sugar City. City. And so they, we spoke and we, they agreed and that we will come together. So and you stole work. them? You stole them from? I didn't steal them. They came off their free will. They you, were, I you, didn't you steal convinced them. They wanted to, to move. Well, no, you, you convinced they, them. They, like for instance, Sugar Bowl was behind me like, um, most of the time telling me, when are we going to open Freedom? When are we going to open the station? Let's come and mm. try and go in. You need to do something. You know? So you say you, you were behind you saying to open Freedom. Mm. You always had the concept of Freedom. Yes. And you always had that name. I, I decided that would, would be the name for the station. Because and why that name? Because we were getting out away from things that were keeping us down and we wanted to move away so that was an aspect of freedom Mm -hmm. also because of the black struggle that i had been caught up in during the 70s and 80s and so on right freedom was the obvious name for it i looked at all the options jack gave me um insights into different um names that i could use freedom resonated with me Mm -hmm. freedom resonated i don't know why it just resonated that this is where you need to be and again I wanted to open a station that would be devoid of political interference. Because when I worked at the government station, is what the government wanted. We did. Mm-hmm. But when you open your own thing, you're free to do what you want. And so the name Freedom became a natural phenomenon. Mm-hmm. That, that is what we're going to name the station. Right. And we were going to invite people from all political sides to come up here and be a part of it. Right. It wasn't just going to be government. Even though at first people thought it was a government station, eh? Because Oh, Junior Liber is a big labor man, so therefore, you can let labor people come up. I proved them wrong. Mm-hmm. Because some of the first guests that came up here were members of the opposition. So, question. Mm-hmm. I'm not really involved with the politics thing at all. Mm-hmm. But, in. You said Junior Liber is a big labor man. Would you say the radio station to this day stays no. neutral? Stays neutral. Because we, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Mm-hmm. And so, by your actions, people see who you are, not by your words. And by our actions, we have proved that we are not politically aligned to anybody. Because we bring Pam up here. We, did, we carry the meetings, the mm-hmm. press conferences, the conferences. The same thing for PLP, the same thing for Labour, the same thing for NRP Nevis, the CCM. They all come here regardless. I couldn't do that at ZIZ when I was the general manager. Right. As a matter of fact, I tried at one time to bring the leader of the opposition to do a Christmas, uh, a New Year address, and I got, I almost got fired for it. Wow. Yes. They said, no, 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 How, you can't just get up and bring people up here like that. Who gave you that authority? Mm-hmm. So um, I realized that I had the need to do my own thing and with freedom, all sides contend. Everybody could come. We have an open door policy when it comes to political parties. Right. So. In freedom now, early stages, what were some of the key struggles you faced? Money. To do mm-hmm. to fund to fund uh, projects, to do things. Mm-hmm. That was a key. That was a key area. 
but and especially getting ads, we had to go out and walk the streets morning, noon, and night to get ads to come in because advertising dollars is what was paying the bills. Mm -hmm. So we went Nevis, we did research, we went Nevis, we marketed over there, we came here, we encouraged people to advertise with us, our prices were the best, we're getting the best returns, we, 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 we kept saying we're number one station and all of that. And people bought into that because they saw that what we were saying, we were carrying that out as a plan. Right. So um, you talk about ads mm -hmm. and ads was was paying the bill so mm -hmm. is it is it that ads is the main source of revenue yeah for the station to See, this up, day? To the, up to this day right ads. we don't and get no handouts and no income from anybody right right yeah. Be, and you see the reason i ask you this is because as it relates to content creation advertisements and endorsements mm -hmm. is where the money is at Correct. a lot of people don't understand that that is where that is it's really at that, yeah, that's man. that's what pays the bills for any radio station Correct. any content creator if you look locally regionally internationally it's always ads you Correct. know sponsorships Correct. endorsement mm -hmm. deals mm -hmm. you know that's what pays the bills for for any kind of entity that and you know what was good they were getting returns for the money because right. people came back and told me afterwards man i'm glad i advertised with you i could see an increase a step up right. in, in 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 people coming to the business mm -hmm. and doing business with us when i asked them uh, they said they hear it and freedom mm -hmm. or they hear this and freedom and that and freedom okay. and so they come to find out what what i have to sell what, what i have to offer right so at what point now are different question where would you rank freedom amongst all the radio stations in St. Kitts News? Number one, clearly. And at the what people's choice. And, and at what point did freedom become the number one station? That's a good question. Um, I would think probably um, we're now 13 years. I would say probably during our third going into a fourth year. Mm. Uh, I realized that other people had a lock on the news. Mm -hmm. we didn't have such a vibrant news department at the time. But as we got good people and who stayed with us, it got better and better and better. And I can tell you now that unequivocally, Freedom is the number one station when it comes to music, information, news, uh, social platforms, social media platforms and so on. It, it, people, are, if we go off the air, there are people who tell me that when station goes off the air, whether for electrical or transmitter problems or whatever, and they hear shh, they still don't move the station because they want to hear when we come back on. And right. that is a test of loyalty that people right. have, that they stick with us through thick and thin. And why you, why you think um, freedom stood out amongst all the other stations? Because we said something, we meant it, we carried it out, and people proved that what we were saying was genuine and authentic. We right. wasn't giving them no fake anything. It was real and it was happening as we speak. And right. so that stood out for them because other stations might have made promises to do this and to do that, but couldn't deliver. We delivered. Right. And a key thing behind freedom too, I would say, you give you give a level of freedom to the the personalities. Yes. Yeah. So um Correct. Would you say that risk, taking that risk, why 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 did you take that risk? Because it was given, no risk, you know. A matter of fact, it was a reality because the DJs here have other things that they can do. Mm -hmm. And I never stopped or prevented them from doing what they wanted to do. I uh, say, well, okay, you're taking a day here, you should be working. This is your shift, you got to come up or adopt you. I didn't have that kind of language. Yeah, but, but I some, wanted to encourage them right. to do what they're doing. But some, sometimes, sometimes that's, it's all good. Mm -hmm. It's all well and good to, to have that. But sometimes them things they kind of threaten the income then or mm. it threatened it threatened the business overall because mm. you would have had people you'd have had personalities mm. who have certain political um stance mm. you know and that that comes with a level of consequence which is evident in your life where your family have certain ties so you wouldn't have gotten certain opportunities at mm. certain point mm. in time so that's the risk i'm speaking about mm. you know what i mean so you never feared feared that no no, I am a pretty determined guy. Once I put my, my mind on something, I try to get it done. Mm -hmm. I strive to all, to hell and high water to mm -hmm. get it done. That is called stick. My grandmother used to tell me that's called stick to itiveness. 
Right. And so that is what we stuck to, you know, what we believed in and we made sure that we, we made it happen. All right. So moving on now, religion. Religion is a thing we feel like we need to touch on. What was yeah. the past though? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but, but, but um so what would you consider yourself to be? I'm a Christian minded person. You're a Christian minded person? Yes, yes. I, so why do you feel like you're a Rastafarian? Well that too. Because there are certain Rasta principles are Christian principles. What Rasta believe in is the same thing that the average Christian person believe in, only that they have a different force or source that they contribute and an, an homage to. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same basic principles of being good, loving your neighbor as yourself, and give, doing good to the community and so on. These are so-called good Rasta slash Christian principles. Okay, so you would consider yourself as a Christian. Wow, that's that's it's interesting. I thought you was a Rasta man. I'm a Rasta Christian. No, that you can't be a Rasta can't Christian. Be a Rasta Christian. <laughs> no, you know where it's up. You know where it's up. Yeah, a Rasta is well, a Rasta. I grew up, I grew up um, in a church across the road here named the Pilgrim Holiness. Mm. That's all I knew. Went church five times a week, wow. especially on Sunday. Go early morning worship, Sunday school, and night service. I mean, I grew up here. My mother was a Christian, mm -hmm. and she makes sure she too and had church in them. Right. So now, but um, it's only as I got older, certain basic Rasta beliefs that I incorporated into what, into my thought process, mm -hmm. um, like um, the one love kind of thing, mm -hmm. the the food. I think that is an excellent way to get rid of certain uh, diseases that are in your body if you eat it right so, you understand yeah. right right yeah, right so because you I, know you know to be honest with you rasta is not really a religion rasta is more of a way of life a way of life exactly it's yeah. more of and you say you speak to rasta and christian being almost the same thing from my understanding of rasta is the is the school of rasta that goes into the bible that tries to make Rasta into a religion, you know? Mm -hmm. Rasta, me, me know from, from listening to Muta Baruka and so mm -hmm. on, because <coughs> me, listen, me listen to, to me people listen to like him, him a lot. Yeah, me listen and to him, like his style of poetry. Yeah, he would, what he would say mm -hmm. is like, the, the Rasta man them, who, where him know, like mm -hmm. a school of Rasta that he knows, uh, Rastas in the hills. Mm. We sight up Rasta from not from the book, not from the Bible. Them not gonna look from for, the lifestyle. From a lifestyle, Correct. you know, yeah. because at some point, at a point in time, Rastas were persecuted in Jamaica. I know that. You know, yeah. so them man there, there is there is a whole generation of Rastas who grew up in the bushes, mm -hmm. who had to go to the bushes. You know what I mean? So and them them man they never had no Bible to read. Right. You know what I mean? That the matter be is. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know? But it's a, it's a yeah. different experience. And when me, when me kind of ask you that, it's because you have the, the GB a lot of times. Me read mm. the Stockpan mm. Freedom all the mm. time in my care. And sometimes I would hear um, the GB come on and you would say some, some things about Africa and educating the public on what it what who it is mm. we are as black people because mm. a lot of a, a lot of us don't know we don't have have an identity Correct. like we don't know that there was a time that black people existed before slavery Correct. you know mm -hmm. so and me would do who sit down and read and listen and watch things about african people before slavery you know mm. trying to figure out self mm. trying to find self it's like that's that stood out to me why why did you go go down that path well from since i got um a light went off in my mind about africa and how we had been brutally brought here by force but into as slaves and so on and what we have done since then to free up our minds from as Bob said, the mental slavery. It, it, it struck a chord in me, a chord of, of unity, of oneness, of strength, of vision, of per having perspective on a matter that related to me. I'm a black man from the heart of Africa, as I see it. And so I pursued studies in African history when I went to Mona. I met some great people up there, like um, Trevor Monroe, George Beckford, um, this this Rasta, this Sir Walter, what's, what was his name? Um, 
Marcus Garvey philosophies and, and opinions and so on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did deep research into my African consciousness, into my African being. And so I resolved that I would continue to preach. And when I came back from UWE and I came here to form this group named Okolo, which is The Voice, that is what we, that was our mission to spread the black word that Africa is free, we are free, we have a oneness with Africa as a people, and we move on from there. I mean, I internalized that and made that a part of my life, of my very being, mm -hmm. and it has not stopped. I've continued that way, and that is why the GBE came up, because I had to find some way to, in caps, to put in a capsule, a five-minute capsule, something that spoke to people's freedom and, and heritage and history. Mm -hmm. That had to come and, out. And, and you, you got a, a good reception from it? Yes. I Up to this day. Right. I, people call me when something goes on. They say, could you play back the GBE later or uh, tonight? Uh, I have a pen driver bringing it. Could you put it on the pen drive? Right. And so we did, we did that. I mean, just, this is something that I'm glad that I started. And I'm glad that it has taken traction among the people of Sinkis and Nevis and further afield because I people in America and England call me and Canada and tell me that they just listen to GBE and what strength, where you get that from? Mm -hmm. um, I tell them where to find it on Facebook or on the internet and they, they, they use it in their lives and teach their children because it's not only to empower me, it's to empower children who, who have had that similar experience that I've had that they can be great as well in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, through pursuing a knowledge and empowerment of Africa, you're pursuing a knowledge and empowerment of yourself. Right. Because it's all about self, you know. Yes, sir. And it's all within us. Yes, it's there. You know what I mean? That's it's, right. It, 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 everything, everything that you see come out of you, it's something inside of you, you activated. Marcus Garvey came here in 1937 and spoke at the Mutual Improvement Society. And that is what his message was all about. African man, break free from your chains and go out and farm black business. He was very strong on black business in the speech, saying people need to come together and buy from each other, sell to each other, empower yourself before you empower the Jews and the Arabs and the Europeans. Do it for yourself first. Right. So speaking of self now, um, we see where violence is erupting in your um, community. Mm -hmm your home community where you say you grow up um what's your thoughts on that well first off i would like to extend condolences to all the people over these many years who have lost children due to violence and crime especially gun violence and my thoughts on that is that we need to put on the gun make your brain your gun think positively big up your family help each other as 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 a people because using the gun and the violence ain't getting us nowhere. It's just mourning and crosses of Springfield, you know? And that doesn't help a nation to progress. It hinders your na nation from progressing. So I would want for the young people to be productive in their life and productivity doesn't come through the barrel of a gun. That is destruction and death. Mm -hmm. So I would want to see young people empower themselves by doing things that would empower each other and government to give grants and help and assistance where necessary. But you got to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that people today tend to want to rely too much on handouts and mm -hmm. they don't want to motivate themselves to do things for themselves. They want somebody else to do it for them. Mm -hmm. So we need to break away from that thinking and be more independent and move together as a people. If the, if the Chinese could come here and make, do business, and spread an open business here, there and everywhere, we could do it too, but we need to support each other. That's the thing about black people. We don't support each other. We prefer to pull down each other and, um, and let another race, ethnic race or whatever, um, big up and become huge in the country. Because mm -hmm. they have this here, they have the hotel here, they have business on this here, they got all kinds of business to open up. Mm -hmm. We should be doing that. This is our land. Another man come from overseas, bigger than you in your own country but you see it's a thing it's like a small community it's not i feel like it's it's not just in st kitts nevis it mm. happens you know, it's, know. In, it's in any small community mm. like sometimes we meet people from 
like small communities in America and we listen to them talk and how they talk about their lives. Mm. It's like you could see that the only reason why, especially the older ones, they would tell me the only reason why they they have gotten successful or even changed their lives mm. is by through traveling. Mm. Like they them them live and see dif- a different type correct, of lifestyle. Correct, correct. Yes, you have some some of them youth you never never even leave and it's new listening. That's true. Like some of them youth you That's know, all they know. That's all they know. Yeah. You know, so to break that kind of cycle like, kind of, is, is is hard and that's true. I think what we see is a lot of people make it political. Mm. But this thing run much deeper than politics. Than politics. Than politics. Yeah. yeah. Like even this recent the recent search, what happening now? Mm. That one kind of different to me because we see we see where in Jamaica is the same thing happening. Like mm. the same friend, friend and friend war. And when that mm. them kind of war they start is it is almost impossible to stop correct because it's almost as if they got to kill out all of them one another for it to stop because we see where the war starts in jamaica from politics then it turns to turf then you go to gangs and now it's the friend friendship mm. fighting over the 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 um lunch is one mm. and that one they're the most bloody one True. So this one that start here is is is, is scary because I see where it happened back home. Yeah. I just I wish I wish it could stop from. Like I wish something can happen where it it just stop. Correct. Like this 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 one the nice and you see how much innocent people losing their life. But you said it. You said it. What you're saying is very profound. Because you've witnessed it in Jamaica and you see the same thing happening here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Yeah, as I saw it start, you know? Yeah. I saw it start like friends, friendship. Mm. Mm. People who were friends before. I mean, we don't know the exact situations behind this one. Mm. But from what we are here, on the streets, it's like, this is this, this not nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. me also brag, me also brag and boast about, like, we used to brag a lot that since we live at a place where we can lift the door up. <laughs> Not now. Every night. <laughs> yeah. Like, we live at a place where crime non existent. Mm. For years, we have brought about that. Because since 2012, I mean, there was a point where things used to happen. But there, there, there was a time when I tell him I could have brought about mm. which part we live. Mm. No violence. So my father called me and asked me because. In, in in our parish, right? Clarendon. Growing up in Clarendon, there was where I grew up in Clarendon, there was violence. Mm-hmm. There was violence. And what happened is the youth them from Kingston and the bad areas, mm-hmm. them they, they, they run away. When war get had, they run away and spread out in the country country areas mm-hmm. so now clearing that a country and from 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 them come country they take time and, and them fest them fester mm-hmm. like they them come with them virus and spread them virus basically That's and right now my parish one of the most violent wow parish look at that eh? look at that so seeing where this start now mm-hmm. tell you, you see the links i tell you yeah. it's not nice happening here right now uh, yeah, yeah. but um Moving on, moving on to something like that. Wrapping up. Wrapping wrap, <laughs> wrap up. Before we wrap up, yeah. let's touch on relationship. Yeah. Are you in a relationship? Are you a married man? Well, I was married when I was living in New York to one of the baby mother, what do you call it? Yeah. Without going into the social <laughs> dimension. <laughs> no, man, we have to go into it. We have to get into it. Uh, yeah, so, so how much baby mother you have? Well, you know, a few. Mm. Yeah, you know. But five? A little over eight. five. No, I don't have eight. A little, maybe about seven. Jesus. No, man. Yeah, man. Uh, uh. Literally? Yeah, but... So, how you, you, you end up with so much? So, so, so. Life. Life. So, so you're in a relationship now? Um, I wouldn't say I'm in a relationship. The ladies I'm in this... more in a relationship with my children them and so on. Don't think no, I'm not asking about your children them. Oh. I'm asking about... Female to man. 
Yeah. A relationship. Are you in a relationship? That's well, what I'm asking. A relationship with different females who have children. So it's a relationship in a car you got to provide for your children. No, I'm not talking about that. You you talk about sexual, I'm not talking about like sexual that. relationship or I girlfriend. I can't discuss that on, on the ear. That is my personal business. <laughs> 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 so like you have multiple man no no I, I don't want you to jump to any conclusions because of that no but if you're not be straightforward me have to jump to conclusions how many, how, you have you have more than one girlfriend I have one you have one yeah you don't have no side chick no just one just are one are you faithful to her right you sure yes I am okay so you say what no, but, but then you, you, the same question to you. Do you have a girlfriend? Because oh, well, the, the, la- the ladies in here say there's do some carpet cleaning, you know? I hear them say all kinds of things, but I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, they just mystic to me. I mean, what are they, they be talking about? I have no idea. I don't just watch them and laugh, you know? When they come with the carpet story. Since they do want to start up that carpet story, you know? Say so they be home cleaning me on a Saturday time before he come up. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> so what, what what does she mean when by that? When you see her ask her. I don't ask her. When you see her ask her because <laughs> I tired try to unravel the mystery. Yeah, so how come so so how come you're not married and settled down? But I was married already when I was in the States. So mm. so we ready ring here. Yeah? Ready ring here. So we ready to be back. What me you couldn't it, you didn't, could. it didn't last. It didn't last. How come how come it didn't last? Um, for various reasons, maybe I get, I was, I get married for the wrong reasons, you know what I mean? Sometimes you discover after you're married that maybe you should not have gotten married. Mm. But I got married anyway. So, so you, you, married. you were not ready for marriage? You said it, you said it. So, mm. But I would, I would get, I'm interested in somebody right now mm. and we could form a relationship, I could see that happening. Mm. Oh, so you're having sex with somebody? I, I didn't say that, you said it. No, I'm asking. But I don't want to go into my sexual <laughs> behavior because that's not the public business. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is... <laughs> Anyways, people, <laughs> we have a politician here, you know? <laughs> so, people, I like that. we have come to the end of another amazing episode of the Perspectives Media Active. People, remember to like, share and subscribe Mm -hmm. this has been Mr. Juni Liebird on the Perspectives Media Active I'll do him to answer some of the questions but next time we'll go catch him again you don't know it people like share subscribe till next time we're out I said nobody now believe it (laughs) well if they may say I may beat it me and the pastor, me not go preach it to a we all it down. Yeah, man, it's Dejour, you know what I mean? Giving you a different perspective on Perspectives Media. Easy. Perspectives Media.